somewhere God. children at the well storytelling yes. and stepping toward the lion a documentary We've got two great guests here John Layden he's a filmmaker and uh, Marty Gillard uh, Gillard Gillard right say that right like Dillard's it's a That's store right. right yeah <laughs> good uh, and uh, she's a uh, she kind of coaches some of the kids or tells them you know how to present a story is that correct that's right I'm with the interfaith circle one of several different coaches over the years um, when John Lydon was part of our group uh, he was just a wonderful up-and-coming storyteller but he had this dream of making a film and we were looking to make a documentary we thought it would be a small thing that the kids would work on and the next thing you know John really took it to great heights we, we, we knew John uh, back when we were, uh, we were doing public access, uh, what well, we've been doing now 16 years, so it was early in that, and you really seem to have a good grasp of it, so I'm not surprised to see that he's doing quite well. John, tell us about the film. Yeah, well, I was a part of Children at the Well throughout my high school years, and it really made a big difference for me. It gave me a place where I could be myself, and uh, you know, I found something that I was good at, which was storytelling. Um, so I befriended this kid in the group named Laudi Umar, who um, is Muslim. And he had dealt with years of prejudice and bullying in school. He originally was going to a, a Noor Islamic school in Schenectady. And he graduated from there and then was going to a charter school in Albany. And that's when he dealt with a lot of negative comments uh, after 9-11, people calling him a terrorist. Um, so I got to know him better through Children at the Well and discovered what a great story he had and how Children at the Well was really helping him to open up and be himself and to not be ashamed of that. And I really saw a reflection of myself in him. So with his permission, I uh, started documenting his journey through the group. And uh, so the film shows his transformation. Uh, you know, going from a kid who was a victim, bully victim, to someone who's proud of who he is and uh, doesn't let negative comments get him down. Um, so it was an amazing process, uh, an arduous one, to say the least. <laughs> Marnie can attest to that. Mm -hmm. It took four years. Um, and, you know, it was a collaborative process. I worked with Children at the Well, Paula Weiss and Gert Johnson, who are the co-directors of Children at the Well. They're going to be on the show in another few weeks. Yes, yeah. yep. Um, so I had to work with them. Marnie and I worked with them um, on, you know, do, giving them what they wanted, but also I wanted to maintain my vision of what the story should be. Um, so basically, the film is about children at the well and Alaudine's journey. And uh, Marnie was uh, an amazing advocate for me and helped make the film happen, really. We're, coached Alaudine, found him that great story that really connected, that he really connected with. So it was a great process. Uh, Marnie, I know that there's stories in all of us. We all oh, have yes. a story to tell. But we sometimes many. we don't realize it. Um, as adults, maybe we can find our stories easily. But how can a child find their story? Well, in our group, what we really did is encourage children to, uh, because we're working through faith traditions, to look at their faith traditions and see, are there stories there that resonate with you? And we would tell some stories to the different teachers uh, to encourage the kids to think about different stories they know, but also we encourage them to look at their life stories as connected to faith. And Alaudin, as well as his friend Kalafala, uh, they really liked looking at their own experience. They uh, got it. They, they got did. it. They that got it right these away, yeah. Transitions we've made as young Muslim men in American society, um, going from an Islamic school all the way up to eighth grade and then to public high schools or what, what private change, high schools, yeah. a lot of changes. Now, how did you uh, get the title of the, the film? Because it's kind of an odd title, Stepping Toward the Lion. Yeah, well, I don't want to give away too much and spoil the movie oh, okay. for people, There's but it has to do with a lot of spoilers here. It has to do with a Loudin story that he told in the film at a public performance, and uh, Marnie and I came up with it together. We thought it was a great way to summarize the film's primary theme. So, And it, it does seem to change, like you mentioned, how much it changed him by being able to tell stories. and and to get this message out. Do you believe that this film is going to affect uh, more kids? 
Absolutely. Um, you know, I know how many, I've known so many kids that have suffered from bullying, and cyberbullying is such a prevalent issue oh. today. So I how think, do you even get a handle on that one? Yeah. Um, so I think this film hopefully will show kids that there are groups out there that they can find where they can uh, be themselves and be proud of themselves. And uh, storytelling is a great um, tool for that, especially interface storytelling. So, you know, one of our goals for this film is to expand Children at the Well, um, you know, get a group started in other states, maybe nationally um, at some point. And so far we're having success. At Sage College we did a screening back in October. Mm -hmm. um, and some kids were so touched by the film that they're starting their, their own, own group, group yeah. uh, Children at the Well group, and Marnie is, I think, working with them on developing that. So. And Marnie, the name of the the, the children at the well. Could you explain how that comes about? Yes. Um, I believe Paula Weiss was the person who might have come up with that name. Um, or maybe, again, it was a, it was collaborative, a collaborative effort. Yeah. I'm not sure. I wasn't there for choosing that name. But um, the idea that in ancient times, the well in the marketplace or often in the center of town was where people came to share information, to share stories, to meet each other, to welcome new members of the community because of course everybody came to the well. And because we were working with youth and we wanted this idea of peace and understanding uh, to grow, we said why not children at the well, the children meeting there and bringing back this sustenance of life that water is, but also their stories to their families and to unite a community. Right. Now, when can people see this film? Well, we're going to be having another screening in Schenectady. Well, actually, the first screening we're having in Schenectady will be on April 6th, probably around 2 o'clock. Um, we are still figuring out a location for it. It might be at Proctor's in the GE Theater. Um, so that's to be determined. I'd recommend uh, your viewers check out the Children at the Well website or uh, you can uh, like the Stepping Toward the Lion Facebook page, um, and there will be updates on there about where and when the screening will be, but it will be April 6th and probably 2 o'clock. So will there be a um, uh, pre or post discussion? Yes, there will be a discussion following the film. I think that that's really important to, once you see a film like that, there's going to be a lot of unanswered questions, or how can I do this, and this is such a great project. So I think it's important that you are doing that. That's really great. And um, so what I'll try and do is when, once I get the information, I will announce it uh, in my uh, uh, newsletter and also on the show so that you know when you can see it. Because it's really a project that is so important. And uh, just John has just kind of related one, one incident. And I'm sure that there's many more. Will they see a number of stories on this uh, documentary? Yes. I mean, there, you know, the only story they'll hear all the way through is Aloudians, but there yeah. are little snippets of other kids telling their stories. Great. So it's, well, it just yeah. shows the, the expansiveness of the uh, uh, concept of telling stories. Though. Absolutely. And Marnie, we can see you, I guess. You're going to be, are you going to be at Wordplay? I am on Sunday, okay. uh, right at Proctor's um, Gallery that's right we up announced above. It. Yeah, we announced it at the beginning of the show. The so box office, you get yeah. A love story. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, another love story. Oh, my goodness, from songs to amuse to love stories. So <clears throat> thank you. Um, check out Wordplay. Lots of fun. And there's so much going on in our community. There's something for everyone. So please check the papers, check our show. You'll find out something good's going on. Thank you, John. And I know you got to get to school, so we're going to get him out of here quickly. And Marty, thank you again thank for being you. here. And Love I hope to. you have a great turnout at the Wordplay. Uh, we're going to take another break, see a little bit more of John's film. And when we come back, we are going to be talking with Max Suddeth. We're going to find out about those butterflies. Stay tuned. Kayla in Hebrew means who is like God. My name is Alaudin. Um, it means um, high place in the religion. While my mother was pregnant with me, she kept rubbing her stomach like Aladdin's lamp. <laughs> and so that's what my little sister, my older sister, she was only three years old. She was like, you're rubbing, you keep rubbing your stomach like Aladdin's lamp. And that's how they came up with the actual um, Arabic pronunciation of my name. So it actually comes from Aladdin. It's really all about welcoming them and helping them to feel safe. So if you can focus on the goal of, of making that child see the storyteller inside them, that they can just tell from that place inside them that each storyteller is different. My name is uh, Ritham. In Sanskrit, that means uh, sacred truth. My name is Khalafullah. 